your comments. Hmm. How do you learn what the key moves are for each character? Well, I mean, the best way to learn what the key moves are is to observe somebody who's playing the character and just watch what they do. If you're a real nerd, why don't you pull out a piece of paper and just focus on the moves that are producing the most results and then write that shit down. There's obviously a reason why this motherfucker's doing this move and hitting with it every time, right? Like you watch a Mishima player, boom, Doria. Okay, maybe this shit is good. Oh, wait a minute. Boom, this poke, laser scraper, whatever. You know, write it down. Observe. Observe what good players do, you know? That's my opinion on how to find. Other than just yourself, you know, like when you go into the practice mode of the game, explore, you know, explore with moves. See how it feels. Do you like the way this move works? Are you comfortable at the range? that this move works at? Hey Eris, I just got here and I missed the tutorial. Can you repeat it again, please? <laughs> Sorry, I can't. But, I will upload it to YouTube later. So you can catch that later on my YouTube channel. And thank you very much. Um, yeah, but that's what I would do. Just go in there and see what you like. See what you're comfortable with. Also, you gotta watch people that are better than you. It's very, very important. Wow, so fucking fast. The chat room is flying. How do you defend against moves you are unfamiliar with? You don't! Back, back. Uh, the question is, how do you defend against moves that you're unfamiliar with? You don't. You can't. In Tekken, uh, the worst character in the game can beat the best character in the game if there is a problem with information and knowledge. Because even the worst character does a shitload of damage if they fucking touch you, right? Cynical Moogle. Puppy joke, JK. I don't get it. But thank you very much, Cynical Moogle. Um, yeah, it's really... Uh, the knowledge is one of the most important parts of this game. Extremely important when it comes to Tekken. You have to know what you're dealing with. But, if we're talking, like, seriously about fighting games, what fighting game is that not the case for, Right? every game i mean recently i played against uh, uh mokoto right when i was playing street fighter 4 online in a online wednesday night fights tournament i was not aware that her jumping axe kick is dragon punch punishable that small fact would have been a game changer right and that's not tekken so basically my point is it doesn't matter what game you play knowledge is extremely important not even just in games in anything the more you know the stronger you are uh, so really uh, how do you defend against characters you're not familiar with the answer is you don't you don't uh, do that you have to learn the way you defend is you learn and practice rudimentary practice over and over but that's any fighting game. That has nothing to do with Tekken. Oh my god, chat was cleared by moderator. Moderators, please don't be dicks. Uh, I don't. It's the Wild West. It's fucking Moss Eisley in my chat room, internet. I'm sorry. I can't, uh, I can't really be held responsible. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to read these questions. Jesus H. Christ. Best recommendation for beginner character. Okay, this is very, very important too. The way the structure of Tekken is, the way it works, is the, the cast is very homogenized. Every character is essentially the same character. So initially, a few years ago, when people asked me what character I think they should pick, I would always say pick an easy character. But I think over the years I'm realizing that that is wrong. Every character can be played easily, quote unquote, if you choose to play that way, because the game allows you to play that way. The movement in the game is homogenous. The jabbing, basic types of punishers, every character has the same types of shit, more or less. Some better than others, but the point is that you can pick any character you want in this game. It doesn't matter. It's not like Street Fighter, where in Street Fighter, if I pick Cody and I do Fierce Punch, Cody could fucking do this shit, he could pull out a fucking umbrella, I don't even know what Cody's gonna do if I push Fierce Punch, right? But in this game, if I push two, my character is going to stick their fucking hand out, their right hand, and they're going to punch with it. And it's going to be a two punch, right? If I do a standing one, it's always going to be a standing one. It's going to be a jab. So you don't have to worry about the differences in characters in this game. It's all the same. 
there's no character differences or no character archetype when it comes in when it comes to like play style or specific differences like that it's more about learning the concepts of the game learning how to break throws learning how to put your character where you want the character to be for example if i tell you something like hey uh, uh ice cold 49 you know the second hit of that string is a high you have to be able to then think to yourself "Ooh, the second hit is a high i better duck under that if you're unable to do that simple strategy that's what you should focus on don't worry about your character don't worry about anything else you need to be able to duck and then punish when i say the second hit of that string is high so big big umbrella point is don't worry about your character as much as you worry about being able to control any character that's what's the most important being able to control your character is extremely important in this game Mm, let's see here. Yeah, the thing is that people are not interested in, you know, the, the future, of course, is Tekken 7. Everyone's excited about Tekken 7. I'm very excited about Tekken 7. And, you know, to some people's dismay, uh, it is very, very similar in terms of legacy skill. So, a lot of the old strategies seem to be uh, identical and apply in a very one-to-one -one way to Tekken 7. Now, the good news about that is these things that I just explained to you, they will carry over to Tekken 7, like, to the T. It will be exactly the same. So, you know, that's just the way it is. You know, I, they didn't change the series all that much in Part 7. So, these strategies will all be applicable, like, on day one, basically. You know, it's totally going to be about movement. The same thing. I noticed Gosain asked for tips on Armor King. I've done relatively comprehensive uh, tutorials on a few characters, and those are available on my YouTube channel. I think I did Wang, Oscar, Jin Pachi, uh, Dragonoff, King, Armor King, Fang, uh, a few characters i've done a handful of characters and they're long tutorials so if you're bored and you got an hour or so to kill you can search my youtube channel and you'll find some tutorials for uh, those characters also rip has done a lot of tutorials for a lot of other characters um i forget what excuse me i forget what his youtube channel is what is it level up your game youtube level up your game and you will be able to find a lot of different tutorials uh, so yeah, just use you got to flex your resources, you know, you got to flex your muscles when it comes to the resources here You got all kinds of places you can watch videos the, you know JDCR is streaming on Twitch all the time now He's the best player in the fucking world, you know, and YouTube of course endless supply uh, Talk about dealing with pressure for newer players in the chat. Uh, you know the thing is if you're getting pressured in this game and you don't know what to do, it's because you can't control your character. You're just trying to block and you're getting hit. Because when you're trying to block, you're thinking, this isn't working, let me try to do an attack. And that's not going to work either. So it's because you don't know how to control your character and you have to go right back to what I said earlier. When I tell you, hey dude, that's linear, you could sidestep that to the left. You have to be able to go, got you Eris, I'm going to do that shit next time because he did it three times in a row. I mean, that's really what you have to focus on. The new player who's having trouble with pressure or the new player who's having trouble with these different concepts, it's really because they haven't gotten to the point where they can control their character well enough to even deal with pressure. I mean, concepts like sidewalk left, sidewalk right, and backdash are advanced concepts, but they're essential for the beginning phases of learning the game. So it's so... That's really the problem with Tekken as a series. The main problem with Tekken as a series is that the most advanced concept in the game, which is the movement, is the basics of the game. So it's fucked. It's like the fundamentals. It's fucked up that the fundamentals of the game are advanced. That's why people don't like Tekken. Because the fundamentals of the game are basically the most advanced tactic in the game. Movement. Moving around, sidewalking, I've done, I've done multiple tutorials on movement in general, but it's really what it's all about. 
I mean, you ask any fucking player. You ask the Korean guys, what is the difference between Korea and any other country? They'll say, every other country tries to focus on mix-ups. While Koreans focus on movement. Movement. It's, that's just the way it is. It's the problem with the game's design. And it's only a problem if you see it as a problem. Maybe you don't see it as a problem. But that, to me, is the biggest problem with the game's design. It's uninviting to new players. You know what I mean? Uh, that's just my opinion on it, of course. What if you can't do optimal max damage combos like doing electrics and just frames? Well, you know, uh, the interesting thing is that in Tekken Tag 2, uh, in Tekken 6, I did relatively well against some very, very good competition, and I never did optimal max damage combos. Because I felt like I, you should do combos that you will never drop, as opposed to combos that you could drop on occasion. In Tekken Tag 2, it's not exactly, that's not exactly the case, because the difference in the optimal combo and just a regular combo is so big, the damage differential is so big, that in Tag 2, you almost want to try to do the best combo, you know? Um, and really, that's only because of Tekken Tag 2's system. I, I'm sure Tekken 7 is going to be different, and, I'm, and I know that Tekken 6 and any other solo version of Tekken is different. It's because of the combo system in this game. There is, you can really squeeze a shitload of extra juice out of each combo in this game if you're a fucking nerd, is what I'm saying. If your nerd levels are high, you can do an extra 25 points damage by squeezing the right sidestep out of the tag assault or the right fucking angle out of the wall hit you could squeeze way more damage out of the combos in this game than you could in Tekken 6 like big time you know uh, let's see let's see what we got here is there any benefit to using a stick over pad since movement could be different depending you know it's really a matter of preference I've seen players do the exact same movements, the exact same types of strategies on both pad or stick. Kim Bong Min, I think was his name. I forget who it was. One of these Korean guys, he had a problem with his hand because he was having like carpal tunnels or some shit. This was back in Tekken 5. So that motherfucker decided, all right, let me just kick the shit out of everyone at this tournament on a pad. And he did the same shit with Devil Jin. He was doing electrics, Korean backdashing on a pad. You know all these players like Core and Fab and basically every other American player out there who's been successful, other than people from California, all use PAD. So, personally, I think any peripheral can accomplish what you want. It's just a matter of preference. Uh, Dans, sorry, that was Dans. I always mix them up. Anyway. Let's see here. Tekken Revolution, all of the same tactics and strategies will apply to that as well. It's a similar game. I can't sidestep moves under pressure. Well, you know, when you play Kuma, first of all, you're going to go to hell. But secondly, I don't play Kuma, and I don't really know what you're supposed to do with that character. I know he can't move, and I know that it's an advanced character for that purpose. You know, uh, he's big. And you have to be exceptionally good in general to be able to play Kuma. I mean, you, when you're on the ground, you're going to eat a shitload more damage than you should, you know? Uh, as well as, there's other factors, too. Kuma's a big character, he's an advanced character, and he's a nerd character. I don't know. If you pick Kuma, whatever. That character is going to be fucking dead in Tekken 7 anyway. Fuck Kuma. Next caller! <laughs> Cut that bitch off! Sorry, I don't like Kuma. I want Kuma out. I send Harada an email every morning. Get rid of this fucking character. I don't think he's gonna do it though. Anyway, anything else, Internet? Can we uh, can we wrap it up? Let's see here. How much frame knowledge is relevant? There are players, especially in a solo versus solo Tekken, it's not essential in the least bit. In a game like this where there are two life bars and again you have to squeeze every drop of juice out of every situation, punishers and stuff are really really important. Which if punishers are really really important then that means frame data is really really important. 
but in a solo game you can get away with you know not knowing all the frame data I just think you know this game really is more like advanced in general Tekken Tag 2 is just a more advanced game in general for many many reasons and in this game I think frame data is more important than in games that are less advanced because of the lack of uh, two or even four I guess if you consider your own moves four move lists at the same time you know as a virtual fighter player what tips would you give uh, I mean, you know, have an open mind. Going from Tekken to Virtua Fighter, that's what I did. Going from Tekken to Virtua Fighter, I realized uh, expecting for the game to play like Tekken is, like, absurd. The game plays so differently than Tekken that the best advice would be to have an open mind and don't expect Tekken to play anything like Virtua Fighter just because they're 3D fighting games, you know? Uh... And another thing that I think is very important, in Virtua Fighter, when you do a sidestep, and it's a successful sidestep, it gives you a reward. Like it says, cha-ching, you did a good sidestep, and it evades. But if you did not succeed in your sidestep, your sidestep will be different, and there will not be that rewarding cha-ching, right? This game has no cha-ching, so you're just moving. You got to rely on your own eyes and your own wits to prepare yourself for the whiff punish you can't just go sidestep cha-ching okay now it's time to hop kick you have to just be watching you have to be moving and watching uh, that's the only difference as a 3d environment you have to do it manually in this game that's one thing i noticed um no cha-ching dude uh let's see here okay i'm gonna wrap it up pretty soon What is your thought process when going down a character's strings on, and deciding on whether they are good or not? Uh, you know, if you don't know much about the game, don't worry about that. If you know about the game and you've gotten to the point where I know how to play Tekken and it's time for me to start creating strategies, my own strategies. If you're at that level, then it should be very easy. It should be very intuitive because you as a player, perhaps you like to fight at this range or perhaps you feel very comfortable with, you know, ducking. Some people like to duck or maybe you like to uh, throw a lot or whatever. These types of things, just you should observe your own comfort zones and try to play to those comfort zones. Like let's say you're a king player and you know how to play Tekken. Of course, you're going to focus on throws. So once you start like you once you decide I'm gonna focus on throws you're gonna start trying to decide how you're gonna apply the throws so what's it gonna be like okay am I gonna do like a down two into a giant swing oh that's a cool strategy let's think of another strategy that I can throw with let's say oh I'm gonna do something like I'm gonna hop forward and then I'm gonna do a uh, rock bottom or I'm gonna do a capital punishment and if he blocks it I'm gonna do a giant swing or I'm gonna do a chest bump if he blocks it I'm gonna do a throw there I mean there are there are it really is a matter of learning the system first if you're having a hard time deciding what moves are useful it just means that you're not ready for that phase of the game yet that the the creativity phase of the game comes after the learning how to control your character phase it's the most important it's the most important part. If you can't do, if I tell you, hey, you got to be able to duck the second hit of that string. If you can't duck and then punish that shit every time, you're not, you're not there yet. You're not ready yet. You should focus on that, you know. Uh, anyway, uh, hopefully that helped you guys out. I'll put this up on uh, YouTube later. A lot of people asked me about this concept and... Uh, I just thought that I would give my two cents on it. This is not a definitive explanation on the way the game works, but it is my uh, take on how you can approach the game if you don't really know how to apply strategies. Um, I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do now. Mm, it's 2.30. It's Big Thursday. Hey, those of you who don't know, uh, Lionel from London is going to be uh, on the podcast tonight. Well, first of all, first things first, those of you who don't know, I do a podcast every Thursday evening at 8 p.m. Pacific time. And we usually talk about different fighting games, things that are going on in the scene, uh, and most specifically, we talk about Tekken. Uh, and 
Lionel is a uh, Tekken player from London. I believe he's from London. He's from somewhere around there, you know, the Mary Poppins area. And uh, he is throwing a tournament called Lion's Den, and it's turning out to be a, quite the tournament. JDCR, who's the best player in the world, or one of the best players in the world, uh, and Harada, as well as many, many other players, are going to be there. So he's going to be on the show. I think it's going to be a pretty, pretty cool uh, entry. He's a weird guy, too, so you might like that. Uh, that's at 8 p.m., uh, for those of you who are interested in that, mm. let's see here. What am I forgetting? Oh, I see Nugava talking about a Super Arcade announcement. Does anyone have a link? I don't know about that. What's going on, Dolphin? How's it going, everybody in the chat room? Greek OG, boot up Steam. I sent you condemned as a gift. Thank you. That's really nice of you. Greek OG. In Azusa, California? Get out of here. Let me see this shit. So what I'm talking about is Super Arcade. And before I get bombarded with all the who, what, when, where questions, the city of Azusa... CA looks like a definite go. A definite go? Azusa's kind of close to me. Azusa's kind of close to me. Anyway, uh, the Greek OG just uh, gifted me a game called Condemned Criminal Origins. Thank you. I've never heard of it. I'll try it out, though. I appreciate that. Close window. Okay. Mm. Let's. Ah, what do we want to do next? Thank you for joining me, everyone. Of course, I really appreciate you guys uh, tuning in. And those of you who are new around here, I stream all the time. I mean, it's my job. <laughs> 50 hours a week streaming. I play all kinds of weird shit. I'm planning on attending Resident Evil Nationals, Onimusha Nationals, and Hebrew Nationals. Uh, that's all going on this month, or sorry, March. Um, let's see here. Ranked matches? No, you know what? Uh, recently I played this game again, and I played solo against solo. Man, it's so much more fun to me. So, unfortunately, if I play ranked, and even if I do solo, the other guy could do tag which probably he will do and that really is not my, not what I'm all about I'm all about solo mode I like solo against solo uh, so that's what I'm gonna look forward to Tekken 7 is coming uh, the um, launch of the arcade version is pretty soon so very very excited about that internet yeah I noticed that I'm on the cusp of hitting 20,000 followers. Shocking, if you ask me. Thank you, everybody, for liking my stream. Warms the cockles. Uh, Resident Evil Nationals is an invite-only event, so you can't really sign up for it. It's only for the most elite S-tier level players. I heard that they're going to have a DJ play, and he's going to smash his face against some electronics. And then they're going to have the Megas there, too. It's going to be sick. Cat face. <laughs> anyway. You know, Internet, I'm thinking that <clears throat> what I want to do is I want to go for a walk. To be honest with you, it is a beautiful, beautiful day today. And uh, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go for a walk. Uh, I'll probably be back uh, and stream. But... Uh, for the time being, I'm going to go outside and get some fresh air. For those of you who didn't catch the combat cast with commentary, uh, I'll upload that to YouTube. And I will also upload this uh, tutorial that I did to YouTube for those of you who are interested. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Those of you who continue to support my channel through subscriptions and donations and whatnot, I really, really appreciate that. And those of you new around here, uh, thank you for uh, joining me. I'll catch you guys in a little while. Take it easy, Internet. Tekken 7 and Mortal Kombat. Excitement is through the roof. See you guys in a little while. <laughs>